Mike, it's August, the world's most popular month for vacation and travel. What can you tell me about the brain when you're traveling? Well, uh, travel's good for the brain. How so? Well, you're out there, you're in a you're in a in a world of new things and new experiences. You're navigating. You're using the machinery of your brain that basically controls your movement across the surface of the planet. You're doing that for all kinds of practical ways and all kinds of interesting, for all, with all kinds of interesting challenges. You got to find your way to the uh, bathroom in French. <laughs> you got to find yourself your way to the uh, the restaurant that has that crazy name. You have to find your way across the city to buy the metro. And all of those things are challenging and fun and good exercise, not just for you, but for your brain. And one of the most important things about travel is you're outside of the, your normal, predictable, boring, physical realm. You're not in a place where things are unexpected, where they're com continually surprising to you. You just don't understand how, quite how they work or quite wh wh what you're doing or where you're going. And that leads many people to abandon taking the vacation because it's just too dangerous, too complicated, too, too uh, challenging. challenging. Yeah. Oh, well, to the contrary. I mean, you're in your life in which almost everything you do is predictable. I mean, you get up, you, you have your strategy for going to work, you know where you're going to get the coffee. You know, you know, you know the way you can sleepwalk. In fact, you do see people sleepwalking in life all the time. You know, you wonder if they're actually alive or maybe zombies. You know, you can't really tell. <laughs> <laughs> so, and the simple fact is that life is too predictable for us. It's not really meant to be that way. You know, this is one way that we've changed our world. We've tried to make everything so predictable that we do not really have to use our brain to operate in it very much. So it's really healthy for us to go into a new place where almost nothing is predictable. And where we have to, everywhere we're going to go or everything we have to do represents another little bit of challenge to us. We actually have to use our navigational machinery. And a big part of our brain is dedicated to navigation, to knowing where we are in the, in the world, to knowing how we got there or we'll get there again. And exercising it is really important. You know, it's one of the parts of our brain that's most susceptible to loss when we get older. You know, this is your hippocampus, and you know your hippocampus is something you want to keep in good shape. So you're on vacation, you're somewhere new. What are the best sorts of things to do for your brain? Well, wow, that's a long list because there, those things will depend very much upon where you are and sort of what your attitude is in life and what you enjoy doing. You know, I mean, it, almost everything you do, there are new challenges, that uh, new things to learn, new things to do that can be exciting and fun. Maybe I'm in um, Hawaii and the most fun thing to do is underwater. And I have the experience of trying to uh, sort out how to snorkel without drowning or sucking in too much water and actually see the fish with full enjoyment. And that's a, that's a great thing about a holiday, that you're, where you're really living it. You know, you try to get into the, con the situation and you try to really live it, and that means that there's a problem to solve almost every minute. Sometimes I find I'm in a city where I don't even speak the language. Right. I'm not a bit surprised by that. <laughs> me, me too. Yeah, and, and 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 you know, actually struggling to try to speak to the to to, to people wherever you are, yes. it's a good thing for your brain. Why is that? Well, it's because when you exercise yourself in both either the reception or the production of language, you're exercising machinery in your brain. It's really fundamental to keeping you vital and alive and healthy in your understanding of things from the listening side of your life and it, from the speech production side of your life. And I guess you're attending more than you would if it was something of in your course, native language. Of course you are. And basically you're also capable now of interacting with that person with your emotional brain on a level in which you can't if you can't talk to them, right? <laughs> so you really want to be able to talk to people and you want to talk to them on a level in which you're responding in your brain emotionally and you're getting it back. If you're traveling a long distance, uh, you may be crossing a lot of time zones and experiencing jet lag, that doesn't seem very good for the brain. Well, it doesn't seem good for me every time it happens to me. And especially when, you, when I go east, it's a real problem for me. And, uh, you know, it's because your, your brain basically has a clock within it in which it controls the release of, of chemical agent hormones in your brain, basically, that are regulating what's supposed to happen hour by hour in your day. And, and actually the adjustment of that clock is very slow. It's one of those processes in your brain that's very pokey. 
when you, we were not really expected to move across the planet at six or seven hundred miles an hour, for guy's sake. I mean, really, that's a, we weren't designed for that. It was never an issue until about a hundred years ago. Right? Well, it is one of the benefits of uh, taking cruise ships, which is a whole different yeah, kind of yeah, travel. No, no, yeah, that's right. So, so well, cruise ships are, that's, that's another kind of holiday. You know, it's a holiday that I, I personally don't prefer, but I know many, many people love it. But I think one of the, one of the things to me, a virtue of taking a holiday is that it's loaded with challenges and new experiences, right? There, there's, there's another form of holiday where everything is planned for you. You know, it's just, it's sort of like being home in the sense where you, you don't have to worry about where anything is, where the food's gonna come from, anything. Everything is, you know, as somebody's gonna come around and tie your shoes, you know, it's that <laughs> kind of situation. Well, uh, to my mind, part of the fun of it, and fun, fun for your brain, exercise for your brain is to think of it as a place where you're always out of your comfort zone in a sense. I mean, that's good. Yeah, I've been answering your questions. Well, what do you think about travel? Well, I always think of what my father said to me when I set off on my first solo uh, trip uh, around Europe. He well, said, just remember, if you wanted it to be like home, you would have stayed home. <laughs> that's good. <laughs>